So in this episode, what we're going to focus on is improving our productivity. As you might notice, one of the things that's slowing us down the most with iterating in our game mode is waiting for the whole like lobby screen and picking screen. And then we're even waiting for the timer to count down before the horn goes off. So this is kind of a nuisance and we want to speed this up. So fortunately for you, I have already written code that will allow you to skip through all of this and simplify the process down of skipping through it. So in here, uh, this code will be on GitHub on the, the project folder in this episode. So if you go into a vscripts and down into vscripts, we're going to create a file called game setup.lua. Now, if I open this up in here, we have this file with like around 80, 90 lines of code. I will explain a little bit more in detail of what this exactly is doing and how you can write your own rules and do other stuff. But for right now, we're going to see how we can include it into our project so that we can use this file. So in here on our add on gamemode.lua, we want to write require up near the top called require uh, game setup, which is the name of our file. And what this does is it adds it in as a Lua module into our uh, current like execution of code. Now, then once we've required it, we can call functions from it. So the function that we need to call is game setup, which is the name of the class and in it. And when we do this, it will skip to our picking stage and it will or it'll skip to the picking stage. It will give us 10 seconds to pick a hero and then it will go straight into the game. So as you see, the lobby screen will not come up now. It skips this and then we can pick our hero and we now have instantly into our game mode. But you'll also notice that the clock is now counting upwards and it started at zero seconds and zero minutes rather than having the pre-game time that's normally there. So how does all of this work? Well, what's happening is that here we're calling this function. If we go into our file game setup, there is here's the name of the function. Now. In this function, there's two settings. One is for development build, and the other is for release builds, which would be the public build that you're sending out to the players. So while we're doing a development build, we will want a number of settings to skip through our, like the picking screen quicker. And the lobby screen is actually really important for setting up your game mode and waiting for players to connect to your matches. So it's important to have maybe the default settings when using your own game mode in the public release. But while we're testing and doing stuff, we want to skip all that, which is very useful in, for our productivity. So at the very start here, is skipping through all of the picking stage, the pre-game time and other stuff. So your custom game has different states. It goes through the picking stage, selection stage. Uh, I can actually show you here in Dota game state. Uh, this is the game rule state. So you have game setup, game selection, strategy time, showcase, pre-game, game in progress, post-game, this is when there's a victory condition. The show, uh, sorry, the showcase one I don't think is used now. It was a cosmetic thing. And the strategy time is where you can, in Dota normally you have the roles where you pick like which lane you go and the items you buy at the very start of the game. So all of this stuff is just going through the different states that are in the game, but we're skipping all the way to the pre- no, we're skipping the pre-game time. We're going all the way to in-game progress. So then after that, we have a couple of other things that are annoying while we're testing, such as music, uh, the day-night cycle is disabled, and all of these functions are very descriptive of what they do. So it's game mode, set killing spree, announcer disabled, set day-night cycle disabled, and so on and so forth. I don't think I need to explain what each one of these does, Something that's default to Dota that we might want to turn off. If we want to leave teleports in our inventory, we can just comment this out. And when we have this commented out, we don't have to... Yeah, we, we'll get the inventory item of the teleport scroll at the very start of the game. One of the other ones that's pretty uh, big is the same hero selection. So by default in Dota, it wants everyone to pick unique heroes. So you can't pick the same hero twice, but you can enable the same hero selection, which is 
often used in a lot of game modes. And if you're playing a multiplayer game while you're testing out on your own, you might only be playing with that one hero. But when you play it with your friend and then they have the, they want to pick the same hero on the enemy team, they can't do that unless this is set to true. So in this case, we are enabling it. But this is only for debug mode. Now what we want to look at is forcing a hero at the very start of our game. So I've written this little piece of code up here at the top. So it says force hero equals nil. So by default, when you get this file, it will say nil, meaning that it will go into the picking stage. You can pick your hero. You have 10 seconds to pick, as it says here um, on this line. But if we want to force a hero because we're testing Templar Assassin over and over again, as you've seen the episodes, uh, Templar Assassin, if we type in that name here, which is the name of the hero, it will forcibly pick Templar Assassin and skip the picking stage. So let's see that in action. Now I could change this to other heroes as well, like techies or whoever, whatever hero that you're doing. So when we launch up, it instantly skips the picking stage entirely. So that's really nice. Now, one of the other things is that if you didn't have this on, right? So let's say you have no forced hero. If we go through the picking stage and we don't pick a hero, what ends up happening in Dota is this really weird bug of where you load into the game, but you have no hero. You can't move around, you can't do anything, you can just move the camera, you're kind of like a spectator almost. So what you can do is, you, you normally in Dota what happens is that you random a hero and at the when you don't pick one, but in our custom games, that code does not exist. So we have to write it ourselves. Fortunately for you, if you call this init function, I have already written stuff that's going to random you a hero, which is down here at the very bottom, called random hero for no hero selected. And this is called automatically once you're in the strategy time phase. Now, one of the other things that is kind of like a little bit annoying as up to right now is the name of our class here. So add on template game mode is kind of a, a really awful name and it's really hard to remember it all the time. And if we do have to use this class multiple times somewhere else, we want to rename it to something that's a lot like better naming convention. So we're going to call this battle arena. Uh, because that's what we're going to end up making. So we can change this and everywhere where this is written, we need to replace it. So as I think there's a uh, ways that you can do this in some editors, but you need to replace this in every single location along here where this uh, name comes up. So now our class is called Battle Arena. So this will always be the case. Now, one of the other problems that can occur when you're dealing with Lua or not Lua is your key value files. You might notice sometimes that you load up your game and your key value files don't work or that something's missing. So if I make an error in my key value file, let's say I forget one of those uh, double apostrophes, what will end up happening is that my console will not give me any error. Most of the time it doesn't give you an error anyways. But what will happen is when I load in as Templar Assassin, something might be missing. Uh, some uh, like my spells are missing as you see here she has the default spells that she normally has and my overriding hasn't worked as you see I have the Templar Assassin's refraction now to prevent this from happening and we got no errors nothing no warnings and this is kind of frustrating and it's a common mistake that people make so what we can do is we can get our any key value file we have and if we go control A and copy which uh, copies the entire file so we've select all copy you can do it this way as well um, but what we have is a URL that we're gonna go to which will be down in the description and it's a validator for our key value file so if we paste this in on the left hand side on the right hand side it will give us uh, an error message to say what exactly is going wrong so it's saying on line 13 uh, your incorrect number of quotations. So if we add another quotation here, it'll say your KV file should be completely fine. So if that says it's completely fine, your key value file probably works. So this is like a validator online. You can fix your key value files this way. 
really nice that you can do this. Now, the other thing that sometimes happens is that if we have an error in our code, so let's go back and fix our key value file first. So we put this double apostrophe back. Now we're gonna look at how we can debug something a little bit quicker that we make a mistake in our code. So let's just say this function does not exist or whatever we call it, right? And this function doesn't exist. We've never written it and we're calling it. So this is just some gibberish that Lua is not going to understand and we're gonna get an error for it. So if we write this and we wait for our game mode to start up we'll end up getting red text that appears on the screen so this red text is sometimes hard to read as i was saying earlier you can go into your console and you can scroll up and as you know the scrolling thing is kind of frustrating to deal with because you can't really find exactly where your error is fortunately for us the error is all the way up here in the pink or purple color so we want to make that a little bit easier to find and also any sort of messages we're printing out we want to be able to see them too much clearer and visible without mixing it in without all these other logging that's going on so in the console there's a button up here a plus sign and if we click on this it'll say log viewer name it's like add a log viewer so we're going to call this v scripts you can name it whatever you want but what we're gonna do, this menu comes up then. And if we click over here onto visibility, and now we're gonna scroll down to vscripts and click on vscripts. So we click that and we click okay. Now only messages of type of vscript will come up. If we click on back to here to our default, which is the default console, you can see the different categories here on the right. As you see, these error messages are vscript and your error message will now come up. So if I go back and restart this game mode, now that we've loaded in, we can bring up our console. And if we go over here to vscripts, we'll see that here is our error that's here. And we also have some uh, message that's being printed out. And this gibberish we wrote earlier that was a bug and fixed that. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you want this code, it's on GitHub. Make sure you subscribe and maybe even drop a like.